Hi guys, in today's video, we're going to be looking at folders. We'll look at how you can create folders, how you can write files into folders, how you can loop over the contents of a folder. And finally, we'll look at some of the common workflows around using folders to ensure that your programs don't crash. So let's jump into Visual Studio and take a look. Let's launch Visual Studio, create new project, console app.net framework, C sharp, and we will call this one folders. And we will create. So this program is going to check if a folder exists. It will create the folder if it doesn't exist, and then it will write a file into that folder. The reason we'll be doing this is if we try and write a file into a folder that doesn't exist, our, our application will crash. So we need to make sure that our folder exists prior to doing that. So let's just map that out. So we'll create a path for a folder we would like to use. We will check if the folder already exists. If not, we will create it. And then finally, we will write a file to the folder. So it's important to always do this when you're writing to a particular folder, because you don't really know, or you can't guarantee that someone has run the program before. If this is the second time they've run the program, well, the folder that you want to use will probably already be there. You won't need to create it um, so you'll just write your files to it. But if it's the first time the user's running the program, or if the user for some reason deleted the folder after it ran the program last time, then you don't want to make any assumptions that that folder's still there uh, and have your program crash when you weren't expecting it. So when you're working with the file system and you want to have your own folder, which is very common because it helps you keep all of your data organized, um, you need to make sure you're checking that it's already there. And if it's not there, then you create it and then you write your file. So let's look at how we might do that. So we've looked at paths before. So we'll create a path and we'll say var path equals, and then we want to use the current location that the program is running in, just like we have in the previous video. So we'll use the environment, oh, the environment object, and we will get the current directory and say actually for our program today we would like to have a folder called data and we want to put all of our data files in there so we'll do double forward slash data double forward slash <clears throat> and that will give us our path for the data folder but we don't know if it exists for sure so we need to check if it exists and the way we can do that is we can say Actually, before we do that, we, we need to import our system.io namespace like we have been previously. So we'll say using system.io. And actually, another note on this using system up here. What you'll find is if you do using and just type in system or yep, system and then dot, you'll see all of these other namespaces which exist and actually have lots of objects in them and lots of uh, more framework objects and code that you've got access to when you're using the .NET framework. And actually system, there's there's other ones as well. I think there's like Microsoft, and there's like C Sharp, Win32, Visual Basic, SQL Server. There's tons and tons of namespaces that are full of objects that can be really useful. Uh, and actually, if you find something in there that you think looks interesting, you can do a Google search for it and actually get them get the documentation up for .NET and start to, you know, they give you like quite a lot of explanation about different namespaces and different objects in those namespaces and what they do. And actually a lot of the time there is example code, C-sharp code that you can paste into your application to start playing with, with that. One thing I will quickly show you is if you forgot to use the using statement for system.io and we came down here and we were like, ah, well, we know it's file.read... Uh, sorry, AL. Well, but let's just look at one we've looked at. So file dot read all text. We call it like that. If you don't have that namespace pulled in, it says, oh, I don't really know what this file, it doesn't exist. But 
Visual Studio is pretty smart. You can actually click show potential fixes and it will say, do you need using .system.io or maybe using static system.net.web request? Cause that's got something similar. We don't want that, but there is something similar in there that we might have been referring to, but actually it's smart enough to know that probably you want system.io. And if you click that, it just adds it in there. So it's kind of, it's got your back. <laughs> Anyway, so we want to look at directories and folders. So folders and directories are the same thing. And in the system.io namespace, there is an object called directory. And directory, just like file, has got a bunch of functions in here that help you work with directories. So you'll see actually there's one called create directory. But the one we're looking at now is exists. We want to know, does this directory exist? And this just asks for a path. And we've obviously made our path here. We want the current directory and we want the data folder on the end of that. So we'll pass our path into the exists. And if we hover over here, you see this actually returns a Boolean, a bool like what we looked at in, the, in one of the previous videos. So a Boolean is a true or false value, which means it works perfectly with our conditional logic, our if statement. So we'll create an if statement and we'll say if directory exists and we'll put equals true. Actually, we want to know if it doesn't exist. So we'll say equals false. Um, and then if it, if it doesn't exist, this block of code will run. And that's kind of what we want to do here. We want to say, right, well, if not, we want to create that folder. So the way we do that is we use the directory object again and we use the create directory function and create directory just takes a path as well. So we'll use the same path because that's the folder we want to create and we'll just complete that line. So now whenever you get to line 23, you know that either the directory already existed, so it didn't need to create it or it created the directory because it didn't exist and you're free to write your files into that folder. So let's just go down here. So now the final operation is to just write a file into that folder. So we know how to do that. We do file dot write all text. And now we have to put a path in and we'll start with our folder path because we've already declared it, but we will also add a file name on the end and we'll call this one uh, myfile.txt. But we also need to pass in some data. So we'll just put in here, this is my data string. And if we run the program, it will just complete very quickly. And it will have written that file into our folder. So let's have a look at that. If we remember how we did that before, we right clicked on our project, not our solution, our project, open file explorer, and we go into our bin folder and our debug folder because we ran in debug. And then you'll see here, we now have a data folder. And if we double click that, we have our file and we have our data stream. So directories are pretty straightforward. Um, there is one more method which we will look at before we finish for today. And that is how to look at the files inside of a directory. So what we could do is create a new loop and say for each var uh, file in and then we'll use the directory object to get a list of files. So we'll say directory dot, uh, let's see if we just go over these, get files. You see here, this returns a string array and it asks for a path. So we'll use that one and it will get us the names of all of the files inside of our directory. And we've already defined what our directory is. It's the current directory plus the data folder we know it exists and we actually know there's a file in there because we've just written it. And now we will just loop through and we'll do console.write line and we'll put file into the console because that's just a string from the string array which this function returns. And then finally, we'll do a console.read line to stop the program finishing and give us a chance to look at what was outputted. And you see here, we've got users james source repos folders folders bin debug and then data folder and myfile.txt 
And that's the file that we wrote. If we were to add another file in there manually, for example, let's just say someone just came in here and copy and pasted that file a bunch of times. If we run our program again, you see it's actually picked up on all of those as well. So that's how you can check if a folder exists, create a folder, and then actually get a list of files in that folder and loop through them and put them into the console. Hi guys, well done for making it to the end of the video. Just a quick heads up that there is a link to the project files from today's session in the video description. If you have any questions about anything we've covered today, feel free to leave me a comment. And as always, I will see you in the next one.